Earlier this week, many of us woke up to the news of an earthquake that struck eastern Russia. It was one of the most powerful ever recorded, shaking buildings across the area, even interrupting surgeries. It was so powerful that it triggered a tsunami warning as far as Hawaii and the west coast of the United States. People rushed to get to safety, battling gridlock as they scrambled to get to higher ground. But later in the morning, nothing. The 10 foot wave that was predicted never came. However, we may have just gotten lucky. Images of deadly tsunamis in places like Fukushima, yeah. Japan and Indonesia are still very fresh in all of our minds. And people are asking, why didn't this earthquake send destructive waves to the West Coast? Here to help us understand what happened or what didn't happen is professor of seismology at the University of Washington, Harold Tobin. Harold, before we get into the science of this, can you explain how an earthquake sets off a tsunami? Yeah, absolutely. You know, an earthquake is just a slip of a fault deep underneath the ground. Earthquakes like this happen offshore, so they're under the bottom of the ocean. One side of the fault pushes up over the other side. And when that happens, it also lifts up the bed of the ocean, the seafloor, and that lifts the water in turn, and, and that sets the wave in motion. Water doesn't make hills, so instead a wave starts traveling across the Pacific. And so, Professor, why do some earthquakes uh, create these strong tsunamis while others trigger weaker ones? Yeah, you know, all, all other things being equal, it takes a very, very large earthquake. These ones that are larger than about magnitude 8.5 or so, which fortunately are very rare, are really the only ones that can trigger a tsunami that travels across the entire ocean. Having said that, though, each earthquake is unique. They have different characteristics. Basically, how much of that earthquake fault slip makes it up to actually push and displace the bottom of the sea is a different factor for each earthquake. And so each time you get a different result and some make a bigger tsunami, some make smaller. In this case, of course, there was a tsunami. In fact, the tsunami made it all the way to the West Coast absolutely as predicted. It was just relatively on the smaller end of the spectrum of possible outcomes. So we, essentially we dodged a bullet, but absolutely a tsunami had traveled over the whole Pacific Ocean. So is a tsunami any wave generated by an earthquake? Because I always thought that tsunamis were giant or uh, giant waves. Yeah, any, I mean, a tsunami can be very tiny, ones that we can only measure on instruments like tide gauges and buoys out in the ocean, you know, less than a foot tall. And in fact, in some places, that's what ended up happening here. The wave that arrived in uh, Northern California was about four feet and actually caused some damage, fortunately very slight damage in Crescent City, California. We recorded the tsunami wave here in Washington state as well. So any, it, it can be of any size really. Giant ones, of course, are the ones that do the most damage, the ones we all hear and know the most about. The uh, devastation from the, you know, uh, the Indian Ocean back in 2004 or the Japan tsunami in 2011 were terrible. This was not as big as those, but it was really the same type of earthquake and the same type of tsunami. And I recall vividly uh, that uh, uh, tsunami in 04 and the one in Japan uh, back in 2011. So the question, of course, becomes, you got to send out these warnings when we register these earthquakes. And is there a way to predict how powerful the tsunami will be? Yes, absolutely. As it was traveling across the ocean right after it started, within the first few minutes, uh, the seismologists at the USGS and the amazing people at the Tsunami Warning Centers of NOAA uh, here in the U.S. actually calculated that a tsunami was happening and issued the first warning. And then the observations that are made at the different tsunami gauges that are in the ocean, these special buoys, allowed them to kind of calibrate how high it was. Is it a big one or a little one? And actually, by the time the tsunami hit Hawaii, the uh, predictions were spot on for how large the waves would be there. So they kept adapting their predictions over those first few hours. Um, I think this is a, a story of a huge success of the warning system working exactly as intended. Now the response to the warning had some, you know, has some flaws and we need to keep moving forward on that. Harold, if this had been worse, if there really was a giant wave, you know, hitting Hawaii or the West Coast, are we prepared now, you know? Better prepared than we were in 2011. Yeah, are we better example. prepared than in 2011? Yeah. Yeah, I think we are somewhat better prepared, but I think what we saw with the, the, the sort of the confusion of the evacuations is that we have a long way to go with how civil authorities can manage the response and really how educated the public is on what to do if they receive a warning like that. People didn't know, and I don't blame them, um, but they really we really need to make people aware of what to do in those cases. It's important to know that, you know, tsunamis just like this that crossed the whole Pacific did terrible damage in Hawaii in 1960 and in 1946. And that's why we have a tsunami warning center. Many people died in Hawaii from an Alaska tsunami in 1946. 
So the warning system is in place. Now we just have to do a better job of responding to it. So we're almost out of time, but you mentioned what to do. What is the main thing that people do that they shouldn't do in these cases? Uh, the main thing they do is jump in their cars and try to drive away. So immediately gridlock happens. We want people to evacuate from tsunamis by uh, walking if possible, helping those who can't walk to safety. Uh, you don't need to get to very, very high ground. You just need to be, you know, um, uh, anywhere from 30 to 100 feet above sea level. That's usually very, that's very easy to do in most places, not all places. Mm -hmm. So getting in your car, bad idea in general in these events. Okay. Right. Professor Harold Tobin, really interesting. I have more questions. But I know, we all do. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we'll talk another time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. It was really fascinating.